Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Play's Dyson Sphere program and you join me in a quite exciting place on my way off to a another 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 planet in another star system. So I've now got I've now been out to the second sun which is which we've decided to name Targaryen because I'm getting all kinds of fiery stuff from here. And so by that logic the first planet here is called Daenerys. Um, I'm not going to explain that reference. I'm sure it's going to be very, very obvious to everybody who's watching. <clears throat> Fairly sure. So, out here on this planet, well, I've actually colonised two planets on this on this system. There's um, and some stuff there. Uh, we've got uh, Daenerys, which is, is is the planet is the is the nearest planet in where I'm producing um, a certain amount of coal and also some more other useful things, which I can't quite see at the moment. Let's where, where have I put those? Yes, down here near the South Pole, where we've got a, um, a system here where we're digging up the um, these spiniform stalagmite crystal veins, and those are potentially quite useful. As you can as you can see, if we pan around here, those are being dug up and then passed straight along here by all of these um, all, all all of these chemical plants, and these are turning the the spiniform crystals into um, into the bucky tubes, and that's using the alternative recipe for them. So until now. I've been doing the recipe where you take in some bucky sheets and some titanium and it takes four seconds and it produces it spits out two bucky tubes. Now I'm doing the one where you out here on this planet at least, I'm using the one where you take in six of these crystals, takes four seconds again, spits out two, and then spits out the two bucky tubes. And this is this is worthwhile, I believe, because it's going to take a lot of the pressure off my um, bucky sheet production and also the titanium production. And it off offloads it all to this one single planet out here in, in, in another star system and so the hope is that this this mine here is going to be capable of digging up en enough um, enough spiniform crystals that the process over here will be able to produce the uh, the bucky tubes at the rate where, that I need them at. Now at the moment we're not quite using all of the chemical plants as you can see from here if I can get the camera in the right place the uh, the input belt snakes all the way down here around here and then back up the middle so we can use lots and lots of different uh, machines uh, but at the moment it's because the belt isn't quite full on the input we're not quite getting a full uh, the, we're not quite getting all of the machines running and this is because over here well I've done my normal trick of stacking all of the inputs as you can see here we're doing double stacking here and then we're doing it bringing it up to hopefully up to quad stacking along here but because there is a bit of a short because we're not digging it up quite fast enough for that to really work we're getting as you can see along here a sort of a slightly bumpy varied number of, um, of, of the crystals being stacked up here so it's working, but it's um, it's not quite as fast as it might be. But then I think I shall be doing some more research in the future that will get these mining drills to run a little bit faster and, sli and slightly higher productivity level. I've also developed uh, the research for a, a new type of mining drill. That's um, this one. This one. Yes, photon spotlight mining, um, because that only required green. So I've done that. But unfortunately, in order to make one of those, I need something that I haven't got yet. There it is. I need... Yes, I need 40 of these optical grating crystals, and at the moment, I don't have them. Now, there are a couple of uses for these things. One is for making these assemblers, and I've also noticed that you can use them to make uh, these things, which are required for the um, for, for, for making the solar sails. So potentially, this is this could be a good way of making the uh, the photon combiners, especially as I'll, I'll tell you about this in a, in a little while, but um, I, I'm, I'm having some issues with product producing those at the moment. The alternative is to make them from glass, which is well, from prisms, which is made from glass, which is made from stone. So as long as I can keep a good supply of stone running, then this this recipe, to be honest, they're roughly equivalent. Um, let's let's have a look at the numbers here. So it takes three three glass to make that, and to make three glass, it takes six stone. So actually, it's, it's a choice between six stone and one crystal in order to get this. So maybe given that, maybe the crystals would be better, and I should go off and start looking for those, especially as I need them for the drills. But we'll see how that goes. Um, it's a couple of steps, oop, a couple of a couple of levels, sta stages to make that. Yeah. So as I, as I was saying earlier, we've got we've not got the full we've not got the stacking up quite as high as I would like. We're getting threes and fours and occasional twos out of there. So we're at least running at three times the speed we would be if it was just a single belt. But it's not quite it's not quite as fast as I would like. As you can see, some of these belts coming out of the mining drills are not quite full, and that is therefore limiting the amount of uh, the amount of throughput we can get. But never mind. The other interesting thing about this planet, apart from the spiniform crystals, is that it's tidally locked, and that means, as it says up here, so um, that means that the same side of the planet always faces the sun. If we, so if we flip it around, we can see the sun over there. This side of the planet is always facing towards the sun. So I've just dumped in a big pile of solar panels here, which are facing slightly off to the side because I didn't put them right in exactly the, the middle place. But in this game, I don't think that matters. 
And so these are now producing a decent amount of power. If we have a look at the local planet, power supply, you can see that we're producing 40, we've got a generation capacity of 40 megawatts and we're using just over half of that. There are occasional blips up and down in it, presumably as some machines kick in, some machines kick out. This is probably each time we launch a, a spaceship, I suspect. And so this is now allowing me to this is allowing me to keep this planet powered because there's no Dyson Swarm around or Dyson Sphere around the sun on this planet. There's all there is is just a sun, so we're having to use local ground level solar. And so all of the stuff is being brought out is being put into this tower as as normal. As you can see, we've got 300. This isn't quite as much as I would like, so this system isn't isn't as fast as I would like it to be, but it's it's working. And over here we have a supply of these warp cores, and these are the things I've been using up until now to make my uh, my mech go um, go faster than light, or at least warp out to give it to move faster when I'm heading out to different planets. Um, but the thing is, if you put them in these interstellar logistics stations, you can then also put them into your interstellar um, logistics vessels, and then these can fly between different stars as well. So it allows you to have a much much faster way of transporting things from between uh, between one star and another. Um, and so we can fiddle with the numbers down here. You can choose how far they have to fly before the before you actually enable warp. And 12 AU is enough to basically say anywhere outside the current um, solar system. So at the moment, I've got them all flying on um, using the normal uh, sublight engines for if they're flying around inside the given solar system. But they can use the warp drive if they're flying further than 12 AU. So if they're flying to another um, another another solar system. And the transport range of vessels is also is set to infinite, so they will always fly to wherever they're needed. That minimum load of drones should always be 100%. I don't have any drones in here, so it doesn't actually matter, but I just feel like I should have that always set to 100% as a matter of habit. So yes, here we are providing the um, the the the, uh, the bucky tubes. Not as I say, not quite as quickly as I would like. Potentially, I should come along here and I should be painting the inputs here. And we do actually have coal on this planet, so that is a thing I could do, and that would get me an extra 20% through. And if I remember correctly, what does the what does paint three take? I was thinking it might be a bucky tubes thing, in which case I might be able to loop that round and, and uh, make it extremely powerful. Here we go. Yes, it does. It takes bucky tubes. So actually, I could get. Um, 25%. So instead of a 20% boost, I can get a 25% boost, and I think that will easily pay for the uh, for the extra cost of making this Mark III paint. So I think a thing I should probably do is set is set up making the paint on this planet next time and get that painted up to level three paint and and and, um, and the, mass, the massive productivity boost you can get from that. And also on this planet, I have somewhere yes, I also set up a coal mine because there is a lot of coal available on this planet, and I'm aware that at some point I'm probably going to start running a bit low on it. So at the moment. This is completely full. We've not used it. I don't know whether we've used any of it, but we've certainly got it's certainly full now, so we're not using it as fast as it's being brought in. So I think it'd be perfectly acceptable to use some of this coal to make the paint and then start making those bucky tubes a bit more efficiently. Um, this would, and then again here we've got the space warpers in here to allow the, the FTL tra uh, transport of all the stuff that's being made here. So that's what's going on on this planet. We've found a whole new resource. We found these weird trees that look like mushrooms and are a little bit disconcerting, and these ones that look like normal trees, but in, specifically in autumn. So, yeah, this is a, a whole new planet. It's a bit weird, but it's um, producing these crystals, which are quite handy. Now, this isn't, however, the main reason that I came out here. So, if I flick back out to the uh, the map view, you can see that this planet has um, this, this this star has three planets around it. We've got Daenerys, Viserys, and Rhaegar. Um, now, uh, so so Daenerys, as as, as we've, we've seen, um, is the, is the near near one into the sun. It's tidally locked, and it has these spiniform stalagmite crystals and a lot of coal. Also, lots of stone, quite a lot of copper. Um, so this is a pretty good planet for resources, and I may well come out here for more expansion in the future. We've then got uh, Viserys, which is, has lots and lots of iron, huge amounts of titanium, decent a decent amount of stone, a bit of silicon, um, also fire ice, and uh, two million fire ice and some kimberlite ore, which I'm not worrying about at the moment. And then the other one that I've been to is Rhaegar out here, so we want we want to go there because Rhaegar has has massive quantities of silicon, which I'm not using, but it has also has five million fire ice, and that's more than twice as much. You see, the ship just arrived there; it's going in there, so you can tell I'm using it. Um, five million fire ice, and that's the one that I'm particularly interested in the moment. In, in at the moment. So if we work out the planets over that way, there it is. So if we fly off over here, over this way to go to Rhaegar. Uh, try and get the ship pointed in the right direction. Like uh, ship the mech pointed in the right direction, like that. And then to use the warpers, you have to speed up past to at least 300, and then you can jump into warp drive like this. 
and then be very careful to hit the planet on the nose like this and you drop out automatically drop out of warp and we can then we can actually can fly around the planet for a bit until we find the uh, the actual interesting part of it because i know i've got some stuff set up on here but i can't uh, as usual i don't know actually where was it up to, whoa i've landed by mistake that was not oh well never mind we shall fly because as you can see i've got this um this row of uh, pylons running from pole to pole. So both of my poles, uh, this is not the one I meant to come to, <laughs> both of my poles have got a massive array of solar panels. And the thing is, because planets in Dyson Sphere program are quite small, most of the time, your best bet is to put the solar panels on the poles like this. So we call them polar panels, shall we? And as you can see, this one's producing, um, hmm, I'm not quite sure how to understand these numbers. At 15%, it's only running at 34%. Mm, that's not great. But then the planet is sort of facing the wrong way at the moment with the um, the, 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 the tilt has pointed the sun away from it. I do want to, yeah, but if I put them, so I think the idea is that this, this way, they get all of the power at least half of the time and they get some of the power most of the time. Whereas if you put them around the, uh, around the equator, then they only get all of the power half of the time. Uh, so here we go. But these are uh, these are, oh, these are also showing 34% yield, and I suspect that's because we're on we're at the quite a long way out from the sun, so we're getting a lower percentage out of the power out than we otherwise would. But then the ones at the back here, those are showing 21%. So if we take 34 to be 100%, then you can see that overall these two patches are producing more than if they were scattered all the way around the equator and producing about 50% each. But anyway, that's not what I've come here to show you. The reason I've come out here to this planet is for these, this stuff. This is fire ice vein, and this is this is a much more effective, efficient way of producing the um, uh, producing the bucky sheets. And if we look at the original recipe for bucky sheets, you can see these are a pain because they use well they use coal, which I feel like I'm starting to run a little bit low on, which is why I set up those coal mines out on on um, Daenerys. But also they use um, and they use sulfuric acid, and sulfuric acid is even more of a pain to make because you need refined oil, which I'm short of. You need stone, which is a faff, and you need water, which okay is, is infinite and easy, but it's, again it's still a faff. And you need a lot, you need a lot of all of those, and you need a lot of acid to make the uh, the bucky sheets. So it's just a lot easier to instead come out here and get this um, the, the, this candy floss stuff, the uh, the fire ice brought, um, ore, and then just turn that straight into the um, into the crystals. The only slight downside of this is that it also makes hydrogen and I mean in a way that's not so much of a downside because I've been burning it in these machines to, just to make more power and keep everything running. Um, but it is an extra byproduct you have to think about. Uh, so what have I been doing here? I believe, um, yes I've been running the, um, I've then been running, I've been running all of the hydrogen into these generators to get rid of it but also into the tower because I might as well and that way we can take it away and use it elsewhere as and when necessary because we are getting through quite a lot of hydrogen back in uh, back on Norvis. Now granted I haven't fully um, saturated the, uh, the the nearby gas giant with um, with things to collect with collectors to get the hydrogen off it but still uh, an, an extra supply can't, can't be a bad thing. And so we are creating massive, all these massive quantities of bucky sheets being put into this tower here. And this system is much more effective than the spiniform processing on, out on Daenerys. And so you can see we're, we're basically full. And a ship has just come in and taken, taken a load away. So now we're filling back up again. And the system is just working. It's going really, really nicely. And yeah, there's a ship missing there because that's the one that's just taken some away. So this means I'm taking away all of the, um, all of the bucky sheets that are required on... Um, over on Norvis in order to make uh, everything that's being made over there. Those are all being made here now and I've stopped production on, on back on Norvis. So yes, these are being made in massive quantities. Now let's have another quick, I've just had a thought. So the rest, the alternative recipe for these is titanium and bucky sheets. And so since I'm, I'm starting to think that because I've got crazy amounts of um, bucky sheets and a short, a massive shortage of the, um, of the tubes, I should start making these tubes. I should get I should get some titanium off this planet because there's a patch of it right here. I could dig this up, start cooking it, and then make that into more bucky tubes. Put them in there, and I'd have another supply of bucky tubes here. So I think that's going to be something I'm going to do fairly early on in the next session because that's just it's an idea that's just occurred to me, and I don't know why it didn't occur to me before because it's a really obvious fix for the fact that I've got more of these than I know what to do with and an insufficiency of the other things. Um, yes, yeah, so I shall definitely be doing that. I've got another identical, oops, another identical mine and system over here because there's another fire ice vein. I picked this spot as a, this starting spot because it's it's very close to two different veins, so I was able to drop in the system here very very quickly and easily, and just start and start mining off two veins. Got get the processing facilities in for both of those, and I think when these are running flat out, which is a bit of a rarity, yes, they are capable of getting. Are they capable of getting through the? 
the auras. No, they're they're not even run, using the auras fast as necessary. So I could I could have quite a lot more processing running off these if I needed it. But as you can see over here at the moment, I clearly don't need it. But if I start making the tubes, then maybe I will. So those are my two planets. Those are the two planets I've started to um, use out here in Targaryen. That's that's working quite nicely now. We're, we're making some extra resources here. But as you saw on Daenerys, we're not making the tubes fast enough. So I think we're going to start making some of those on Rhaegar as well. So let's um, zoom out a bit. We can see all the other places I've gone. So Alifa was my starting point. And I've been meaning to rename this one, actually. This should be clearly be called Kalidus because I'm a massive Factorio nerd. And that's what the sun over Norvis, your, your starting planet in space exploration, or your, just your planet in, uh, in normal Factorio is called. So Kalidus is a, is a good name for, for, for that one, I think. So let's, um, let's head back. I, I looked at it and I didn't tag it. So let's pull out again like this and say, I want to go back to Kalidus. In fact, I don't want to go to Kalidus. I want to go to Norvis, so let's view that, and then I can zoom in further, and I can say N -n 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 Norvis, that's that one, so I want to indicate that one. And then from here, I can just jump up into the air, engage flight mode, and... Okay, it's four and a half light years to get back to Norvis, that's quite a long way, but fortunately I've got the boost thing, so I get, once again, speed up to at least 300, then smack the boot... I've run out of space warpers, well, I haven't run out of space warpers, I've just run out of them in the mech, so let's put some more in there. And then... I can uh, get, go to light speed, or more, more significantly more than light speed actually, because it's not taking four and a half years to get back from there, thank goodness. Um, I think it's about a minute to go between the two star systems, which uh, is, is, not, is not too bad. Ooh, and I went slightly the wrong way, but there's Norvis, I can fly over this way now, and I'll just complete this at sub light speed, because I'm, I'm very nearly there, I'm only half an AU away. Aiming when you're in warp mode is quite tricky, and it's probably the hardest part about flying around like this. Let's also refuel the bot with... Let's have some hydrogen to burn, because I seem to have loads of it for some reason. So, yes, it was hydrogen. Boom! Back on Norvis. Great. So, where am I? Um... Okay, here's another area that's making bucky sheets and uh, I'm using the old recipe. I should probably I should probably rip this up at some point because and bucky tubes as well, although we're not actually using any of those. Yeah, I should probably deal with that and make it do things some somewhere elsewhere, elsewhere and just in, in a different place. So, yes, Norvis. I've done quite a bit down I did quite a bit down here as well. It, it was quite time consuming as well. So what, what are we doing here? This is the Oh no, this is this is making this is making the green science. Yes, so one of the first things I did because this is this is a, a quite an important thing for, for my future expansion requirements was over here I'm pulling green science out and combining it uh, with absolutely nothing actually I'm just turning green science which I'm painting of course into um, into warpers because we're going to need a lot of space warpers for all of every, everything that's going to be going on so I've made in a massive quantity of those I've got lots of machines that are now just sitting completely idle because you don't actually get through them that quickly but I feel like I need a lot of them or at least I need to have a lot of them available and the reason I've started making these out of green science is there's, there's two recipes for these for the warpers you can either go in and you can make them out of the lenses which costs you uh, one lens and it makes one warper or you can use one green science and you can make eight warpers. Now making a green science costs half a lens and half a processor. So essentially you're getting 16 warpers for your one lens for the mere, mere cost. So you're getting an additional 15 warpers for the cost of one um, a one process, one blue processor. And I think that's very, very worthwhile. So I've so I've been turning the green science directly into the warpers, and as you can see, we now have a massive quantity of them in here. We've got this, this is completely full, up to 10,000, and those can be shipped out to wherever they're needed. That's working great. Uh, and the green science is, is it still being produced? Probably. Uh, no, the green, science is, the green science tower is also full now, because I've not done any science for a little while, because I've been making a video. So <laughs> that's fine. But we've got, we've got all we need around here. This is, this is all, all working very, very nicely, and is all quite happy. So that was the first thing I did before I even went off anywhere else. The next and big thing I did after I came back. So all of this, all of this process, all of this has been in 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 um, in. The, in all of this has been me working towards trying to make these small carrier rockets, and this is this is what you use in order to build up your Dyson Sphere. These are the ones I was talking about last week that they fly out and they build up the frame that you can then fill in with all of your solar sails. Great, but to make these requires quite a lot of stuff. It requires the blue processors, which sure I've got those. It requires these Dyson Sphere components, 
which require frame material and solar cell and processors. Processors I've got. Solar cells I've got in small quantities, um, but they may be made out of these um, out of these purple things, which, as I was saying earlier, I think I'm going to start making those out of the crystals because it's going to be much much cheaper in terms of stone. Uh, and these di and these graph bucky sheets, which I've been making in large quantities, fine. Um, they also require, but they also require this frame material, and that takes in um, carbon nanotubes, which I'm now making off planet. So that's at least when I have a decent quantity of that coming through, that's fine. Silicon, got loads of that coming in from my planet, fine. Titanium alloy, so that was a problem uh, because that requires titanium and steel and acid. So I needed to start making that and I did that somewhere on this planet. Let's have a quick look and see if I can find it. Where did I do this? Was it you? No, you're making plastic. Oh yes, I remember. So so when I came back, I thought, okay, I'm not going to need bucky sheets or bucky tubes to be made on this planet anymore. So this is this is used to be making both of those, both the bucky sheets and the bucky tubes. And conveniently, the the row of machines that you require for that is almost identical to what you require for making the um, uh, making the titanium alloy. So we had. Up here, we had two rows of furnaces that were making um, making the the excitable carbon. Then we were making then we were making the um, acid here. Then we were making the bucky sheets. And then down here, we had some. I think it was another row of chemical plants to make the bucky tubes. So I did have to rip up the chemical plants and replace them with assembly machine. No, with more with more smeltery. Sorry. But other than that, I was basically able to use all of the same infrastructure that I had set up. Um, it took quite a long time to empty all of the resources out of it. That was a bit of a faff. But now, once I'd done that, I was able to then start calling in um, iron ore and stone over here to make the um, uh, to make the iron uh, to make the steel and then the stone in order to make the no I already had the stone to make the acid so yes cooking the iron cook to cooking it again to make it into steel that was fairly straightforward uh, and then down here we've got then we had an, I needed a, I realized I needed a lot of acid so I put in a second row of machine or program this the other row of uh, chemical plants to make acid and then we can feed all of that in down here with the titanium that's coming straight out of this um, would be coming straight out of here if we hadn't run out of it. Okay, there's a titanium problem. That's something else I'm going to have to look into. Interesting. I thought I had loads of that. Uh, but that gets fed down here and then into here where we can make it into the titanium alloy. Ship that into, into here. And then I was then able to also bring in the silicon, pass it out here and make those frames. So all of this is now being made in more or less the same place. Now I did run into a little bit of a problem with this because it turns out that if you have a when you have a shortage of um, titanium alloy, it all goes straight out. The belts take priority over the ships because you can't send a ship out or a, or a drone out until you've got a, until you've got a drone full. Whereas the belts will empty it; it'll go out on a belt as soon as there's even one there. So it turns out all of my titanium alloy flows straight out here to be made into the frames, which is why I've now got 5,000 frames but no titanium alloy and other areas further down the chain have no titanium alloy. So this is a bit of a problem, but it's a problem of um, it's a problem due to me not having filled the buffers up yet properly. So it's a problem that will go away as long as I have suitable um, uh, supplies of everything. Now I don't know why this is remote supply remote uh, supply rather than remote demand. Um, is it because we're just not using bucky sheets here at all? I think it might be. So I was just trying to empty those out maybe? Um, let's have a quick look. Yeah, so this is using bucky tubes for this. The bucky sheets in here, I think, are just superfluous to... Uh, yeah, we're not we're not using them for anything. So this actually should be uh, just cleared like that. There we go. So now we've got an empty slot over here because we're not using graphene for anything. That can be that can be forgotten about. So yes, that's making... Basically, that's making my titanium, titanium alloy and my frames. Both of which are then, in theory being brought over to that other other area I was showing you over here uh, yes over over here so up here we've got this this is un unrelated this but this is where we're making the blue processor so squeezed in next to that we've got then it, two interstellar logistics stations because I need so many different ingredients for making these rockets and they're pulling in coal to make carbon and iron to make magnets in order to, and then little little green motors that's uh, these things in order to make the Whatever these, whatever these things are called. You know what? I'm going to head over here, so because with it's a little, little bit easier to look at things if I put the robot on site, because then I can stomp around and point at things, um, and get in, get the camera in a little bit closer, all that sort of good stuff, and it gives me a slightly better view of what's going on. This is green science is not. Here we go. So yes, over here, the uh, the um, 
the site the, the the silo the logistics station is bringing in iron ore and and coal which as you can see are being made into the carbon and into the magnets because and also we're bringing in these green green motors which you may remember from last week i was talking about building those up off off planet i think because they was just um they were they they they, they take a lot of ingredients and a lot of faff to make and so it was easier to make them just make them somewhere else and that's enabling me to make these super magnetic rings which then goes into here along with a load of deuterium and eventually some titanium alloy if we ever have a, have any of it are available we can pass that through here where, uh, and then this is one of the ingredients for the robot for the uh, for the spaceships we're also making the um the solar sails and the uh what are these things called uh Dyson Sphere components here on site because these again these aren't too bad these are bringing in the um, uh, these things the, the purple the photon combiners and the and the bucky sheets of which we've got plenty of those well we've got mm, I haven't actually we're really short of these still um, and also the processors and the frames that I showed you before that I'm making just on the other side of this planet and that enables me to make the sails to make the frame components to come over here to make the rockets and the rockets also require the, the fuel but we're short of the titanium for that so eventually we'll start to make lots and lots of rockets which will be dumped onto this belt here that can flow out this way and then this space over here can have a, a, a large spaceport where we'll put in lots of those rocket launch things and we'll start really starting to build up the, uh, the Dyson Sphere relatively quickly at that point so I think that's all going quite well except for the lack of titaniums. Well, it's all going well, except there's massive shortages of resources everywhere. As we, as we discussed, I'm short of the bucky tubes, so I'm going to need to start turning the, um, the bucky uh, sheets out on, um, on in, in Targaryen, out over into, um, into bucky tubes as well. And I think that's going to be fairly easy, so I'm, 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 I'm not too worried about that. We're also going to need to fix the shortage of those purple things. And we're going to fix, need to fix a shortage of titanium. Um, and most seriously of all, um, we've, we've got a shortage of power. So if we look at any of these machines, we can see that we've only got 60% of the amount of power that all these machines need. If we look at the, um, the power usage on this planet here, we can see that we're, we're demanding 600 megawatts and we're only producing 360. So there's a big problem here with power. <clears throat> and the reason there's a problem with power... Uh, oh, that's interesting. I was going to say because there's this massive gap here, but it looks like we've started launching the solar sails again. So there was clearly some problem in the in the production of um, solar sails and that has now sorted itself out now i did look into the um i did look into the solar sail production to find out what the problem was there i was expecting it to be a shortage of the the bucky sheets because i knew i just had to put in a massive upheaval and i thought well perhaps i've not set up the um the the, the um uh, the request properly with the with the hyperspace uh with the, with the warp cores to get to get those in from from out, outside the system but actually no it turns out the problem is if i look on the bus over here now this is where all the stuff is being shipped out for the warp cores we can see that there's there's loads of bucky sheets in here i should be get, i should be stopping stopping this production to be honest but there's almost no um there's almost no photon combiners and so uh, so, I, so I, what's going on there i trace that back to over here where we're making them and it seems there's a massive shortage of the amount of glass flowing in and if we look over here, that's because there's a massive shortage of stone. This mine has clearly slowed down. We've used up most of the stone that was available here. So this, so now we're producing the glass incredibly slowly. So that gets back to why I was saying, okay, let's go out and look for the um, the other components. Where is it? Where, 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 where? Yeah, here. Go and go out and look at look for the look for these crystal things, uh, the optical grating crystals. If we get a load of those coming in, we can start making the um, the the the. Uh, photon combiners in much like somewhere else from these crystals instead of using up massive massive quantities of stone because it takes a lot of stone to make the glass to make the prisms to make the to make the um the photon combiners it doesn't look too bad because it's only two prisms but those two prisms take uh three glass and those three glass take six stone so it's, it's six stone for every one of those no wonder i've been absolutely ripping through it so yes definitely going to have to head out get that upgraded to something much much better and just stop using the and, and stop using all of my stone in order to make the in order to make these because i think it's going to be needed elsewhere so next time i think given that we've got the given that we seem to have the flow of these things working again i'm slightly less worried than i was before given that given that the dyson swarm has started to be assembled again we've got we've got this building up again we're still only at 70 percent satisfaction but as long as these keep flowing we're going to be basically okay for power 
I might put down some solar on Norvis as a sort of as a stopgap, given that I'm building that in quite large quantities. Um, so I think that'll help a little bit. We're not currently filling in the Dyson sphere at any any decent rate, so that's going to that's going to help. We're, going, we're not going to get this drop off where we where we all of the um, all of the solar cells are going into the into the sphere, but we, we, we've got this here. Um, given that I'm making these solar sails. In another way, no, I don't think I, I don't know. I, I won't. I won't um, boost the number of those I'm launching yet, but that will be a thing I will do at some point. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so things to do. Maybe put down some solar. This seems to be mostly fixed, but I want to. I want to sort that out properly anyway. So I need to go out and sort out production of um, production of those crystals in order to get the uh, photon combiners being made in a more efficient way. I need to make sure. I need to find out what on earth's going on with titanium because there shouldn't be a shortage of that, but apparently there is. Um, I need to I need to sort out the um, the bucky tubes so to start turning the bucky sheets into bucky tubes out on on Rhaegar. Um and I think that might be just about it to be honest. I think that's probably that will probably cover all of the things we need to do. Um, to get to solve or to solve all the existing problems at the moment and then I'll be able to hopefully get this rocket starting to launch and then we'll be able to start start looking in to see what the next problem is because there will be a, there'll be another problem with with all of that I'm sure I shall find another problem and then once I've done that <clears throat> I'll then be starting to think about research again and starting to improve everything building up the Dyson sphere and just basically increasing the oomph of everything and just get things flowing a bit nicer but I think this has been quite a satisfying episode it's been nice to uh, to leave the solar system and go off somewhere else that's been quite exciting and to find lots of new exciting problems in, with my um, with, with throughput in just about absolutely everything. <laughs> so that's been good fun. Please come along on Wednesday next Wednesday night next week at 7:30 UK time where I should be starting where I should be doing the stream and going in and trying to fix all of these issues I've been talking about and there are plenty of them. <laughs> um, there also seems to be a coal shortage here. Um, that's interesting. I'll need to, need to look into that to find out why we don't seem to have any coal because it's probably because it's try all trying to come out of mines and we're not actually and oh no it's all being used up by the oil processing and by making this carbon stuff here okay well we'll, we'll look into that as well so yes next wednesday please check out the, tra the uh, channel sponsor that's trefoil.be if you need a server for hosting your game get games uh, check them out use the code lawrence plays to get 20 percent off your first month and please come along on monday for uh, the uh, for the factorio stream where we're still playing crastorio 2 and space exploration it's a lovely combination and i'm glad there's four of us working on it because it's quite there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot to it should we say <laughs> So yes, plenty going on there, and of course the catch-up videos at the weekend, and Factorio videos, and um, GTA videos during the week. Lots happening on the channel, please check it all out and enjoy it all, and thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>